So I will speak about graph database, especially in the microservice world, and how we build the recommendation engine with it. So I'm Chris, I'm a Neo4j and Elasticsearch consultant for GraphWeb, so we are a London-based company, and I'm originally from Belgium. The talk today will be a quick recommendation engines overview. I will do a quick intro about Neo4j and Graph Database in general, so you will understand what Samuel was talking about. I will present Wiko for PHP, which is um, a recommendation engine skeleton, which is representing all experience building recommendation engines in production for the last three years. And we will build actually a quick recommendation engine for recommending you people to follow on GitHub. So a quick overview of recommendation engines. So it can be news you should read, books you should buy, persons you may know, LinkedIn. Which version of a package you should use? It can be, for example, for packages. And which service is best suited to handle a given fear for tolerance? And sometimes it doesn't make sense, but for example, we have uh, last use case in the last month, it is finding the right candidates for medical proofs. So, etc., etc. So, recommendation engines, in fact, are every day in our life. If you open Amazon, Facebook, etc., it is on all pages. We have two main types of recommendation engines for real time it is content based, so it is, for example, based on a book that was written by an author. Has, is in the same genre. And the second one is collaborative filtering, so it is more based on user interaction. If my friends are liking this item, there is chance that I like this item. There are other kind of recommendation engines that are not suited in PHP for real time, which are, for example, matrix factorizations, but it is generally in, with other kind of technologies. The good news with Graph Database is that the features, as well as the relationships between the user and the item, are naturally represented in a graph. This will be the quick intro. A graph database, compared, for example, to a relational database, is we have nodes, which represent your domain entities, and relationships, which are relating your domain entities. A node can have a label, this is what we call a label. It can be, for example, a MySQL table name. But a node can have multiple labels. So for example, person, male, organizer for the meetup, for example. A node can also have properties. Relationship have only one type and can have also multiple properties. The thing is that with graph database, the relationships traversals, it costs nothing. So every node knows exactly which relationship it has to each other node. So traversing a relationship is far less costly than a join in SQL. And in a graph database, sometimes traversing a relationship is less costly than reading a property. So, but it is more technical. And the other good news is that the, generally the recommendation logic is a graph traversal. So if we take an example here, excuse me about the labels, it's in French, but it's because I was giving this talk in French a couple of days ago. So we have one person, Alice, who's rated a movie. Another person, Regis, who's rated also the movie. But he's rated also taxi movie. So you can easily guess what you should recommend to Alice as the next movie to watch. Right? Okay, this is a basic example. But if you look at your database, you don't need any tool. You see your data. It makes sense, right? On the business side, 
it's more that all the business rules are there to provide recommendation that matters. This is the same example. So we will take a simple business side example. So recommend to Alice movies rated by persons who rated the same movies, but that she didn't rate it yet. So this is easy. She didn't rate it this movie, so we will recommend. This is Cypher. This is the query language for graphs. So, in fact, it is a pattern matching language. So, we don't have choice again. So, the match is as the select, which is with parentheses are node, and with the brackets are relationship. So, here, I want that is rated a node and find another, the person that rated the same note. Find the other and suggest me what movie they rated, but that Alice didn't rate it. So with Cypher, it, you can easily express the recommendation logic in a graph. So you return the recommendation, suggestion, and the score. So the score, it will be the rating on the relationship. Second business rule, if the movie has a genre that Alice has interested in, add one point to the score. So here again, optional match is like optional select. Does the movie, the suggestion, contains a genre that Alice is interested in? If yes, so count path, the number of found patterns, to the score. Cool. But this is really basic, right? The problem is that in the real life, the recommendations are really, really, really far more complex. So imagine that you're building the LinkedIn feature people you may know. So you do a brainstorming session and you say, okay, we will find people, common contacts, Facebook friends in common, mobile email contacts in common, all the contacts of your contacts, work for the same company, study at the same school, we share the same interest, we live in the same city, but that's just the beginning, right? So. If we have more contacts in common, is it more relevant or not? Oh, obviously so. So you can imagine what this list would be with Cypher, right? So it is unmaintainable. We live in the same city or we study in the same school. Does the size, does the size of the city or the school matter? So if I live in a small city, there are far more chance that if I was in a school in London, right? If I'm working for Graphire, we are 11 people. There's far more chance that I know everybody than if I was working for IBM, for example. What to do also with emails that actually don't represent a person? You can see that on LinkedIn, right? Are you gonna recommend someone called info at invica.com? Right? Yeah. <laughs> what should we do with contacts that are pending? So, um, that actually already request you to, to be a friend. Those that we rejected, and those that we always ignore. So, if you present always the five same people, and people ignore it, should you recommend always the five same people? It doesn't make sense. So this was the Mrs. slide. <laughs> so what we came with is that a generic recommendation engine has four steps. It is first we discover people, candidates. It should not be people, it can be books, but discover items to recommend. This is the first step. Then we should qualify these items. For example, if you live in the same city, we can add a book 
used to the score. Then we should remove non-relevant. In that case, for example, it can be the, piece of the persons that I already uh, follow or I am already friend with. It should be also which kind of person? Who? Who is not relevant for a recommendation? The first one person who is not relevant? Yourself. Yourself, right? And measure quality of the recommendation. By that, I mean, for example, we paid a recommendation engine for info jobs in Spain, which is the main job search website in Spain. They wanted absolutely to recommend people of your Facebook friends. And actually, it ended up that nobody wanted your fa his Facebook friends in the contact for job search. So. <laughs> So I will introduce Rico for PHP. So this is a recommendation engine skeleton at OpenAir4j. So um, it takes these four steps for you. So all you have to do is just writing your business logic. So this is a standalone PHP library in the core. It has an opinionated arch architecture based on what we experienced in the last few years. It is flexible and it handles all the glue. It means that you can just write add score and at the end all the recommendations will be sorted by score. Um, let's do you will see. So it is on packages, of course. So let's build one recommendation engine. So I have a database of which is in fact uh, ingesting all the GitHub events from the public API into Neo4j. So, for example, people contributing to repositories, I try that. Uh, people following people, I try that. People watching a repository, I try that, etc. Not uh, starving, not watching. Um, so, imagine we have a graph representing interaction with GitHub. This is a really, really small sub part of the graph. So, you have the Symfony repository. You have people contributing to the repository, and you have people watching the repository. So, what we will end up with is I want to recommend to find candidates based on the followers, and so people that following that are following me find who they are following uh, other people and if the node in between is the same one a couple of times it should have a, be a best score. If we contribute it to the same repository it should also um, be a candidate. And this is something special to recommendation theory. Um, penalize too much flowers. So, for example, if we don't do this, the first person for the Symphony repository that will be recommended to you, who it will be? Fatpod. Does it make sense to recommend? No, everybody knows Fatpod. If you don't follow him, it's because you don't want, right? So, <laughs> the second point on GitHub, especially, is that if you follow him, your timeline will be just Fatpod, 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 but, but commented, 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 commented. So, and exclude bots. On GitHub, there are a lot of bots. So there are people, someone following you who is following uh, 30,000 people. So it means that if you start including him in the traversals of the graph, you will end up with sometimes for 400,000 candidates, which doesn't make sense at the end. And, of course, people you already follow shouldn't be recommended. And we don't want ourselves. The first phase, so I say it, is discover. So this is in the Rico for PHP library. You have all these kind of abstract classes you can extend. And the first one is the single discovery engine. All you have to do is give a name. Give a name is always mandatory for logging. So, because 
we look we want to measure quality of the recommendation so here yeah, name followed by followers and my discovery query so the input is who i am how much people that are following me and who they follow but where my follower doesn't follow more, uh, more than x followers return me and the count of so this is automatic aggregation what we call so it will automatically count the number of common follower for the same recommendation so here if Samuel is following me he is following me and they are both following uh, tolerance repository it will return two for the count and give me only 100. So I return a statement, it's like a MySQL, a prepared statement, and the score. So by default, you don't have to overwrite this method. So the default score will be one. You can also give just one default score, or here, what I want is, when this query is returning the score record, I want this score to be, in fact, the recommendation score for this discovery engine. You can create a second discovery engine, which will be match me to what repository I contributed, who I saw, and return me the recommendation and the score. Same stuff, but for recommendation, I want to multiply the score by 10, because recommending followers based on the follow relationship on GitHub it doesn't make it makes sense but it is not the primary interaction on GitHub. On GitHub the primary interaction is contributions. So it should be important that if we contributed to the same repository there are a lot of uh, a lot more chance that I want to follow the recommendation. Secondly is qualified. So same stuff it is what we call a post-processor. So when they recommend the candidates, the recommendations come back, I want to post-process them. So you can do whatever you want. So here, I just want the number of followers this one has. And penalize, so the score, by the number divided by 50. So it will give, for example, if someone has 50 followers, mid one to the score. The two other components are blacklist and filters. Blacklist can be, for example, you can preload all the peoples you are already following, and then you will compare the recommendation to this blacklist. Filters can be used, for example, if we live in the same city, you will not do that with a blacklist. If you're in London, you will load a million of people, right? So you will do just with a filter and compare if there is one node lives in city and the other node lives in city. For the ex excluding myself, there is something built in the library which is exclude self in the filters. So after that you need, just need to pin everything together. So you have four methods to override, which is giving the order of discovery images, giving the post processors, giving the filters, and there is no blacklist, so by default it's just a number. So. And then you would register your recommendation engine into the recommender service because you can have uh, one recommendation engine for recommending people, you can have one recommendation engine for recommending repositories to watch, uh, etc, etc. So, I will use it. It was working. <laughs> Make it bigger. Can you zoom in? 
So, I will just check for whom I did the recommendation. Two minutes. So it was for Jakob, the organizer. Yeah, I can zoom for sure. Uh, oh. <laughs> On the, on the track, though. Thank you, I think the image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it was for Jakob. I gave him as input, so it has a deliverable node, it by login for Jackson. And so it gives me for him. So the backup is from the 4th of March. I will zoom in. I will zoom in. I will zoom in. <laughs> Always. Uh, okay. More? More? Yeah. All right. Gain. It's okay? Yeah. So the first people to follow was Mackie. I don't know who it is. And so you can see, so for each um, logic of recommendation, you have the score. So this is important to monitor. Um, sorry. Do you want another one? Another GitHub account? Who? I mean, fuck, but I mean... <laughs> <laughs> we can. Yeah? 
Um, if you had a big like online store where transactional is quite important and um, relational database for it as well, could you then use the graph database as on, on site it and just keep the data backed up? So you yeah, can so I, I mean, in 2016, a lot of big customers, for example, are still using SQL, Oracle as primary database and are just using a 4 for specific features. Like, it is not only a recommendation, it can be also a network impact management, um, etc. Um, but yeah, it makes sense to only use no 4 sometimes um, for just a feature. However, so a lot of startups are just using no 4 as a primary database because it doesn't make sense to um, to use I mean, to um, split the load of work across multiple databases. So, no. but is it hard moving the data back and forth? Yeah. So um, there are some tools like ETL tools for doing the transformation, but it's generally just one side. Um, however, we did a last um, library. It is more specific use case, but we combine Neo4j and Elasticsearch. So when you search in Elastic, when they get some results, they will contact Neo4j to boost or filter some of the results uh, based on the user graph, for example, the user network. So you cannot really have a social network in Elastic or in, uh, in MySQL. So because you will, you will need to, to do 10, 15, Sometimes millions of traversals to get the results. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you're talking about uh, the different algorithms that are in the library already. What algorithms are available right now? And uh, if I were to extend it myself for whatever, uh, do I need to? Well, uh, which one will be best? Uh, your, your extending your library or using uh, uh, Java Neo 4G? Yeah. So, you will reach for big use cases the limitations of using Cypher. There is, there is this point. So, it is not PHP related, it is the Cypher language related. So yes, we have, for example, a music recommendation engine uh, with one billion of data. You cannot do it with Cypher. So you, we, you need to use 28 cores with Java multi-threaded. Um, so yeah. yeah. But you can go really far with this approach. So e even with 10, 15 millions of people, you can use that. So it is for a real specific use case when you need to do your own Java plugins for the O4J, not for, not for this library. So, but then you can expose a Cypher extension to use it in, in this library, for example. So, so there is in O4J 3.0, which is coming up tomorrow, these top procedures that you can write in Java, in just one file, a specific feature that can do something Cypher cannot do, maybe. And you can contact it with Cypher. What, what size of data do you recommend to switch to more complicated so stuff? It doesn't depend about the size. It depends about the use case. So it's really not, not about the size. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Girls will maybe complain. <laughs> I was just wondering, you had these um, sort of arbitrary business rules that score divided by 10 times 50. So is there a way to um, test and validate the um, quality of the results? No, of course, oh, you should. You should. So How do you prove it? You can log everything. Uh, you can track what the user is clicking. Uh, you will do polls. Uh, generally, you will deploy a recommendation engine feature for just a set of users on your website. Um, so there is no built-in monitoring because it depends on your business, right? Um, but there is built-in logging. So you can, 
for each recommendation served. There is a new UID, you can track it, you can see what the user has done with it, how many users of the same city clicked on the first or third link and why. Uh, so yeah. It's my imagination you start with some rules. Yeah, I start with some rules. Yeah. Machine yeah, yeah. So, for example, when I when I started the demo a couple of weeks ago for Gitter, um, I have a colleague who is mostly working for us with, since three months now, and he didn't really commit on GitHub in the open source um, space, but more for clients, so in the private. So I didn't have a lot of interactivity for my colleague. So all the recommendations served were really, really bad, because it was recommending JavaScript libraries while he was a Java guy. So it, it didn't really make sense. So we um, found that instead of trying to find his followers, etc., it was better to go one level up at the organization level, who is working with him, check the libraries, etc. So this is something... It's a bit of a human element. Yeah, it, you, can't, you can't predict it, right? So it, it is really on your business model in the beginning. Just another yeah? question. Uh, well, uh, uh, have you got any, any tools? No. Um, in your library to do the, uh, the, well, the other part of the job, which is feeding the data to neo 4 No, this is, no, this, this doesn't do. Then there are some algorithms for doing pre-computation, but not for just ingesting data from GitHub, for example. This, you have to write yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Right, thank you.